What's up, divas? 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 What's up, YouTube? What's up, fam? What's up, sis? What's up, friends? What's up, everybody? What's up, YouTube? What's up, fam? What's up, everybody? What's up? I hope you all having like a really great day. You already know it's your girl A. Okay, we came to talk and come talk shit. What's up, everybody? Hope y'all all having like a really blessed day, a really good day. Like seriously, it's nice out. It's summertime. You know, get those summer vibes in. You know what I mean? I don't know about out here. Like I be telling y'all, but I hope y'all all having like a really, really great day. It is Monday when I'm doing this video, okay, and um, the weekend has passed. I need to know what y'all did for the weekend because I, I, I don't want to be, listen, let me tell y'all something. I don't want to be the only one who likes to be indoors, okay? Like, I like to go outside, too, but I don't want to be the only one that likes to go indoors. I don't want to seem like I'm a boring Betty, all right? I need to know what y'all do, what y'all like to do on the weekends. What are y'all things? What are y'all hobbies? What's, what are your likes and dislikes, okay? What are your favorite things to do? What type of sports you like to do? What type of hobbies that you like to do on the weekends or any, any time that you have free? You know what I mean? My thing is this. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. I love a good relaxation. This weekend was great. This week. And, uh, remember last week I did tell y'all, okay, last week I told y'all that they were here fixing my kitchen sink, okay? Now, mind you, they took out the whole goddamn counters. They took out all the counters, not all, excuse me, not all, but the counters that was connected to the kitchen sink and this other one that was next to it. I don't really understand why they took that one that was next to it. It really didn't need to go. It wasn't even a part of it. It was an L shape in that area. So it had its own little, you know what I'm saying? Its own little section for it. Even though it was connected, you can see that it wasn't connected where the line of, you know, the line was at. So anyway, they took all that out. Now, mind you, the guy that I originally spoke to who told me about the work and the amount of time it was going to take, he said, you know, I don't want to leave you with your kitchen all not done on the weekend. So we're going to do it after the 4th of July, that Monday after the 4th of July. I don't want to start it on the day before the 4th and then we have a four day weekend. So I'm going to wait. So that way you don't have to go through the whole entire weekend with your kitchen a mess. Okay, so that right there let me know that it's going to be a one-day process because that's what he made it seem like, as if, right? Girl, please tell me why the kitchen is not done. They just came in and put the drywall back up in that area. I have nothing but this pretend sink. Like, when I say it's a pretend sink, it's a portable sink. It's plastic. It, it's it's nice and deep. It has, a, a you know, it has the nozzles and everything. It's spray nozzle. It's a deep plastic sink. But um, next to it, there's no counter space. So I had to, like, do my own thing. I had to, like, rig it up. I had to put the dishwasher next to it put a big piece of plywood over it make my own little countertop girl you know we have to do what we have to do and then I have this big empty area by my stove where I had to use like my little portable wagon and put all my Tupperware in it because that's where my Tupperware is stored girl it's a mess and I'm like this is this wasn't a day project you guys lied to me they like literally lied to me okay now I've gotten I, it's not that I've gotten used to it but you know I had to make it work for me and my daughters here I had to make it work for us you know us us women we we are like, girl, listen, when I tell you I had to make it work, I had to make it work. All right. My, there's a big, huge, empty spot. OK, by my stove where I have this portable wagon and then I have this huge bag full of bags because I had a little cabinet that I would store all my little grocery plastic bags. And, you know, we keep those. I don't know about y'all, but I keep those little grocery bags here. They make great waste basket bags. They make great bags to put the dirty diapers in. Listen, we use those here. So I got a big bag full of those. That's supposed to be my cabinet. I got my little portable wagon with all my Tupperware in it, okay? And under the sink, the pretend sink, I have like the things that were under my actual sink, which is like my vases and my dog's um, like little basket and my dog's treats and things like that. And my pot plants, my plant pots, you know, things, things like that I had to put there. And then, like I said, I have my dishwasher next to it, which I had to use a big piece of wood that I had, big plywood, put a towel over that. And, hook up my, so I can have my dishes, my dish drain, and have to put one of my dish drains in the, the window sill above it. So, girl, it's a, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. And I just really want my damn kitchen back. Okay. Not like I'm a bet, not like I cook every day, but I'm just saying for convenience purposes. So that's still being done. <clears throat> And on Friday is when they came and they did the drywall. Now, they would have stayed longer on Friday, but I had plans already for me and my daughter, Tati. We was going to bring, you know, Tinky and Tato to um, Urban uh, Urban Air. I think it's called Urban Air or it's called something something like that. I think it's called Urban Air where they, you know, it's a trampoline place. And um, we took them there. Now, this is the first time that Tato, we call it Tato, Nevea, my granddaughter, first time at any of these trampoline places. Like, I brought her before, but she's never gotten on any of the trampolines. So this was her first time at the trampoline place. When I tell you she had the best time ever, like, it was so funny to watch her. She's little, right? And they don't have a toddler section at this one. So, of course, we was right there with her. But... 
It was so funny because the way she was jumping and throwing herself down, she would just like tumble like a weed. It was hilarious. She had like the best time ever and she's so little, but she's like, she can run with the, the role with the best of them. Like she thinks she's like one of the big kids and she has this mentality like she can do anything. She loved to jump off of furniture. She loved to jump. She loved to jump off the steps. I have to, I have to tell her, stop. She's like a little tomboy, but a cute girl version. She's just, she's just something else. So we went and did that on Friday and it was fun. You know, we were there for like about two hours. You know, I just sat back and watched him and laughed and recorded. And um, it was a great time, you know. And after that, we did come home. I had me a couple of drinks. Like, you know, I like, like, Mumsy's been, Mumsy's been at me about this buzz ball. Try buzz ball, try buzz ball. I tried them, girl. When I tell you those things will have you lit with just one, not really lit, but you feel pretty damn good. Now I'm not, I'm not promoting alcohol, but I just wanted something that I could relax to and sit and just relax. You know what I'm saying? And I did that on Friday. I also, on Friday, I did get my inventory, like as well as I did get like my new supplies, my new packaging supplies for my bracelets and things like that. So I was unpackaging those on Friday. I get excited about like packing supplies. I get excited about when I get new inventory. I don't know if that's like a good thing or is that a lame thing? Like, cause I don't got no life. I don't know. It's just, it's something that I like, you know what I'm saying? So I got some of my inventory on Friday. I got some on Saturday. Um, I got some Apple watch band connectors this week, last uh, past week. So I've been making Apple watch bands. Okay. And, um, that is, you know what? I love the fact that I can make something and I can make other people happy with the products that I make. So I will definitely be posting these on my website because that's what it's for. But you guys are checking out. I'm definitely going to show you what I've made so far. I made four of them so far. Um, one was for my daughter, Nay, because she has an Apple Watch. Now, I don't own one of those, okay? Um, so she was basically my um, my demo, I guess that's the right word to put it. She was, she just was helping me, you know. Girl, I'm definitely going to be sponsoring my video for this particular Real Talk. But we did that. I, 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 um, I put my stuff away, my inventory for the week. And on Saturday and Sunday, you know, I just really basically chilled. Tati made this amazing dressing for salmon. Um, she found the recipe on TikTok and she always makes salmon. And when she makes salmon, it's so effing good. It doesn't matter if it's pan fried. It could be pan fried or it can also be in the oven. Either way, her salmon is amazing. And she made this new like sauce for the salmon. And when I tell you it was so effing good, it was delicious. You had to add like Parmesan cheese to the sauce and melt it in there. And I think it was like garlic, butter, and cream. It was like a creamy, garlicky sauce. I don't remember what the name was of it was, but she found it on TikTok. And when I tell you, it was so good. It was so good. It was delicious over the pasta. So she made that for us on Saturday um, prior to her going to have to go get her hair done. She went and got her hair washed and set. And um, it was just so good. It was so, so good. And so I sat there. Hey, girl, you come back to get the phone? Yeah. Okay. Um, I love you too. Have a good time. And I sat there and I ate that and I had me a, a, a buzz ball with that. When I tell you, Tati can cook her ass off. She can cook her ass off. She makes like the best, best, best dishes ever. So that was my Saturday. I sat, me and my granddaughter, we chilled while Tati was getting her hair done. You know, we sat at the house and we chilled and we ate dinner and we watched TV and we played and I made bracelets. This is what I do. Like, you know, I, I enjoy my time at home. I love my time at home. So I did that on Saturday on, um, but Saturday morning, mid, mid afternoon, I did wash my daughter Mumsy's hair and then I blow dried it. And then I put it in cornrows. She had took her braids out on Friday. So she took her braids out. She said for this entire school semester, she is going to be a headband wig wearer. This is, this is Mumsy's thing. This is what she's going to be doing for the whole entire semester because she says she wants to do something different. And she wasn't aware that I had so many headband wigs. So we did that also on Saturday. We went through the headband wigs. She found the ones that she wanted to wear. Today she has one on. She's going school, school supply shopping with her friends for like her school supplies, like, you know, pens and stuff. So she had put on a little makeup and, you know, I watched the headband wig for her last night and I helped her put it on. She has to get used to putting them on herself, but she looks so freaking cute in the headband wig and that's what she's going to be doing this semester she said she wants to be she wants to try something different she wants to have like a different type of hair throughout the year and, and i commend her on that she doesn't want to do the lace wig but she loves the headband wig she loves the headband wig a good headband wig is something that i definitely love i love the headband wigs because i used to wear my own hair just like that with a headband so to me it's just like the same thing today's video is being sponsored by april made by muff accessories or going with the wind wigs where you can get yourself some really great wigs which are video units worn for about 15 to 20 minutes for that tutorial purposes only and once that's done the wig does 
come off and is cleaned up and put back in its proper packaging and stored until it's time to send out to customers. All of these video units are significantly reduced in price. If I'm going to give you an example, if the wig is $300 on the actual website where the wig came from, the retail price is $300 on going with the win wigs, you will find that wig that was worn for 15 to 20 minutes for the price of $150. That's just me. I like to put it for half the price. I like to make things affordable for everyone. Beauty should not be something where you have to go broke for, okay? If you want to enhance your beauty, I don't really feel like you need to go broke for these reasons. This is the reason why I have made going with the win wigs and I have made it significantly affordable. And I normally post wigs on Friday or Saturday, but I definitely do on Instagram and Facebook to let you guys know that there are new wigs available on my website. So make sure that you follow me on both of those platforms so that way you'll be notified. Now also, I do have on my website, goingwiththewindwigs.webly.com. I also have a section category that says made by muff accessories, which are bracelets that are made by yours truly. So as I stated, I am now making Apple Watches. On my website, I finally, you know, it's a learning process, a learning process, and I'm so glad that I'm able to learn and to have the patience to learn. And so I figured out how to do a drop down menu on my website, okay, which is a great thing. And that right there allows me to be able to put different sizes and different uh, series of the Apple Watch. Now I do make the average size watch band, which is an average wrist size, they're stretchable, an average wrist size of six and a half to seven and a half. Those are average size wrists, you know? And the reason why I do that is because that's how they're sold in stores as well for the actual beaded or stretch watch bands. The average wrist size. Okay, so for the first one that I made, well, this is not the first one. Actually, the first one is one my daughter Nay has, but this is the second one that I created. I'm gonna put a picture and a video, a little clip, so that way you can see it. But this is the, the second one, and I actually really do like this one a lot because I love the colors in this one. It's like a very, very light, almost pale, nudish color pink to me. Then we have like an off-white, and then we have like this nude clear marble type of cracked glass bead at the end. There are a total of 10 charms in this particular band, and they all are like a great decent size. All of the charms have rhinestones in them, and they're just really, really classy. There's also some Rondell crystal spacers in this, and as well as this will fit the 44, 45, 49 series. And this is an average length, uh, average wrist size. Now take into accountability, it does look short right here, um, even if I was to put it on, but you have to realize the watch face has to go here. So this is the next one that I created, and this is also a gold tone watch band, and its colors consist of cracked glass and a teal color, as you guys see on the back. Really, really nice. Uh, charms on it. All of the charms also do have rhinestones in them. Along with that, there are some crystal rhinestone um, rondelle crystals in it. And yes, this is also for the same series and it will also fit an average size wrist. These are very stretchy, so you don't have to worry about it being too tight. It gives off great stretch. And then the if you love silver tones, then we have this one here which is also available on gone on made by Muff accessories. And this one, I do like this a lot. And this is also an average wrist. And if you like silver, then yes, we have some silver rondelle crystals. We have all silver charms, which also have crystals, rhinestones in them. And at the ends, we also have some really nice quote sayings on these little pieces here. So those will be available on the website along with many others that I'm in the midst of making. I'm really happy that I am creative in sort of, of a way and I'm glad that I can make stuff that people really will like enjoy. Now I'm also going to be making the watch bands that consist of like luxury brands like Gucci, Prada, Louis, Chanel. I also do have I also will be making those. But for the girls who love like the luxury bling, I will be having those made as well. So definitely check out Made by Muff Accessories or going with the win wigs.webly.com. I will post the link down below. And on that note, you already know, we're gonna get into this real talk, okay? So if you have a real talk that you would like me to embark on to talk about, girl, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Or you can also use my other email, which is April's Real talk at gmail.com if you want to change the name of the people that you're talking about in the email we'll go right on ahead and let me know that you changed it if you want to keep it you can do so as well but on that note let's just get into this girl okay Thank you. 
thing is doing two emails is like great because it allows me to keep people or catch up with people's emails and not have so many people waiting to be, um, you know, acknowledged or read their emails. So I like to do the two um, emails. I prefer to do the two. It just makes life so much easier. But also, like I said, I don't have people waiting in the queue or uh, for so long. So I really do appreciate that. So the first one is single mother. She titled this single mother. Hello, April. My name is, if I ever mispronounce your name, please don't take offense to it. I do truly apologize. It's not, um, it's not that I'm doing it purposely, but I just want to say that ahead of time. I apologize. Hello, April. My name is Faye. I'm a 38 year old black mother with three kids. I have two fathers for my children and my kids ages are 14, eight, and five, all girls. April, I really need to hear how you have dealt with being a single mother. I'm asking because I have been a single mother for two years now. My ex-husband and I divorced almost two years ago, and he's the father of my last two girls, but he has helped me raise my 14-year-old daughter and has been in her life since she was the age of six. So he and I was together for some time. We had troubles in our marriage. He seemed to think it was okay to fuck coworkers. I have been cheated on twice as I know of by him. Anyway, this ain't about his dirty ass. Well, maybe it is partially about him, as he doesn't provide any type of financial support for his daughters and barely even communicates with them or shows up to spend time with them. I have said to him on numerous occasions that he needs to pay me child support and be a part of their lives and be a father to his children. It's so hard being a single mother. I don't understand how any woman can do this or want to do this on their own. I'd be so exhausted at times, barely having time for myself. But I get it. I understand that is a part of motherhood. I am so grateful for my daughters as they keep me grounded and I feel so much love when I'm around them. Sometimes, honestly, though, I just want to scream because how can any parent not want to help or be involved? I find myself really ready to go back down to the courthouse and have them enforce the payments from his paycheck because our agreement was he would readily pay me with no issues twice a month. He paid a few months, about three months, and hasn't paid in five months since. April, how do you cope? How do you cope as a single mother when your kids were younger? Do you ever feel like you're in this on your own and you're just going to raise your children to be amazing citizens and be responsible? When I tell you I realized I have to play the mother and father role, I have to play both roles. I'm sorry to make this so long, but I really want to know how you handle being a single mother. Thank you so much, Faye. So we got Faye, who's who's probably, she seemed, Faye seemed like she might be a little bit overwhelmed. And that's okay, because as a parent, as a mother, who don't get overwhelmed? You don't even have to have children to be overwhelmed. There's a lot going on in everyday life. And Faye is having issues with her baby father, her ex-husband, excuse me, having issues with her ex-husband, doing his part, playing his part, paying child support, showing up to visit, spending time. She's trying to figure out how I coped as a single mother. Now, mind you, I wasn't a single mother for the entire time of being a mother. I wasn't a single mother all my life, like all the time of being a mother. You know what I'm saying? I was single mother for some years until I met my ex-husband and he took on the role of being a stepfather and we also took on the role of being husband and wife and he also took on the role of being a father to so he and I's biological children together. So I wasn't always a single mother, but let me tell y'all something. It sure did feel like it at times because he played the role, also took on the role, he also took on the role of going in and out of jail okay that was his thing all right and i'm just gonna say that was his thing because if you go to jail once that should be enough for you i know when i went to jail once was enough for me i don't give a fuck if i was in here two weeks bitch that was enough for me okay i was crying i was ready to go home i wanted to see my babies yes once was enough for me yes sir but that was his thing okay if you go more than once, I feel like that's your thing. You go twice, it's definitely your thing. So he also took on the role of that. So it did feel like at times that I was definitely a single mother, even though he was he and I were married. And it wasn't even just the fact that he was in jail. There would be times when he would like to stay in the streets because he was for the streets, okay? Hanging out in the streets, trying to, you know, his little side hustle, y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? Which ended his ass up in jail, okay? So he would be in the streets, which also allowed me to be a single mother because while you're in the streets, I'm at home taking care of our family. So that right there allows me to be a single mother. I'm going to the stores. I'm handling things that we could be handling as a couple. But no, I ended up handling it as a single mother. So me coping with being a single mother, let me tell y'all. So before I even met him, you know, I did have my other two children. And I was a single mother to them. Now with my first son, my first child, of course, I lived with my mom. She helped me out. And then I moved out on my own. 
how how I coped with it, it was not a piece of cake. I'm gonna just be honest with you. Being a single mother is, is, is not a piece of cake. Being a parent in general is not a piece of cake. But I coped with it. There are things that I had to do as being a single mother just to survive and to get by. And I'm not ashamed of any of the things that I've had to do. But I, t I do tell you this, I admire and I commend women who do everything on their own because it is a task to be a parent and to be a single parent is definitely a task you know i was not i was not always financially stable as a single mother i definitely was not you know like i told you guys i was on welfare i had welfare paying my rent they were paying my electric bill they were giving me food stamps while i was at home with my two youngest children at the time and so because they were doing these things for me i never had any type of cash assistance so there were times when i would have to wash my clothes of course i didn't have money to go to the laundromat so what would i do i would wash them in the tub i would wash them have my little washing board and i would wash them in the tub and i would hang them up on hanging racks and so forth and these are the things that i used to have to do in my time as being a single mother you know what i'm saying and amongst other things that I really don't want to share because it might be against the law. But you know what I'm saying? I did things just to survive. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it was like a, like a skate in the park or like, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell people to go out and be a single mother because I'm not. But I understand that there are times and there are circumstances and situations where you have to do what you have to do. And that might make you a single mother. Now, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what your race is. I don't care if you black, if you white, if you Puerto Rican, Hispanic, Indian. I don't really care what your nationality is as a woman and as a single mother we sometimes have like this really bad rap and it's unfortunate that we do have like some men that feel like well because she's a single mother she's no good or she made all these mistakes and you know I don't want to get with her that's fine too if that's how people feel but I feel like as a single mother as a black single mother I feel like I'm a strong person and I never allowed anything to tear me down there are times when I've had tears come out of my eyes because I wasn't able to afford certain things for my children or afford the best Christmas or what have you but but you know what I still moved forward I still kept moving forward and I had a plan it may not have been a plan with a man in the agenda but I had a plan to do better for myself and my children so as a single mother I feel like you know what it allowed me to to have a backbone it also allowed me to be a stronger person and you know something I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've had and the opportunities that I was able to give my children but I'm also grateful that you know what I've learned a lot being a single mom, being an ex-wife, I've learned a lot. And I'm not, I'm not putting anybody on a pedestal. I'm definitely not putting my ex-husband on a pedestal, but I will say this about him. He has taught me a lot about relationships, about men, about me as a person. And it's also taught me how to become a stronger, independent person. And I say this because of the way and the things that I've gone through with him, that it has allowed me to grow as a person and as a mother and as a woman. And it's allowed me to have my own strength. And then I've realized a lot. It's not that I can sit, I can sit here and tell you, I don't need a man. And I don't mean that like, oh girl, I don't need no man. Who wouldn't love to be in a relationship? Everybody would love to be in a relationship. However, I don't need a man to do the things for me that I can do for myself. Take for instance, the other day now mind you I don't really like little critters I don't like little animals little critters that don't belong here in my home that could be bugs and that could be uh geckos little lizards you know so because we live here in Arizona there are a lot of those little lizards those little geckos ge geckos running around you know I see them on my my backyard wall I see them I see them the one place that I don't want to see them is in my motherfucking house, okay? That's the one place I don't want to see them, okay? Now, we did have one here, like, a few years back, and it ended up, it was upstairs. I don't know how it got up here, girl, but it was in the bathtub in my girl's, my daughter's bathroom. Now, Tati got rid of it. She had to end up killing it. How she killed it was with some bug spray and, like, um, some type of chemical, to kill it because it was in a bathtub and she was scared to death i was i wasn't here but she was scared to death of it and so were my other daughters so she got rid of it now a few days ago a few days ago this past week i think it was thursday it was either thursday or friday i think it was thursday friday um i'm coming from downstairs okay minding my business minding my black business and it's about it's, it, it was actually thursday because nay was here so it was probably about, I want to say 8 30, 9 o'clock almost, because I was on my way headed to come to bed. Now I like to be upstairs at least by 8 30, take me a shower and relax. 
So it was a little bit past that. And I walked up the steps. There were no lights on um, on my steps. I didn't turn the lights on or anything, but I can still see from downstairs light. So I'm heading up the steps. Now, when you get to the top of the steps, the very first room is mine, which is to the um, to the left. Like it's right there by the steps. So as I'm coming up the steps, you know, I got my things in my hand. I got my little cuppy. I got my cup and my phone. And there's a mirror right next to my door on the wall. Nice size square mirror. So as I'm walking up the steps, now you know these things try to blend in with the fucking background, okay? I see one. This motherfucker, he, he's not that big. He's probably like about this big. Yeah, like about this big. And he like on my wall. I see this motherfucker. I'm like, oh shit. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? Oh my God, I only have slippers on right now. How the hell am I gonna kill this thing? I don't wanna step on this. I don't wanna step on him. He's gonna crawl into my room. My door is wide open. This is what I'm thinking. So I'm like, Nay, Nay, my daughter Nay is in the in the dining room right there, so she can hear me. I'm like, Nay, there's a there's a um there's a, a gecko on the wall up here. And as I'm saying this, I'm like slithering to close my door so his ass don't crawl in here if I startle him. Now, mind you, he could just crawl under the door. I, I already knew that, but he was high up. So I felt like if he was gonna try to get in my door, he was gonna go high up, okay? in my room, excuse me. So I close the door. She asks me to close her door. Mumsy's in there taking her hair out, okay? She's taking her hair out. It's Thursday night. She's taking her hair out. So her door is already closed. And so I'm like, oh shit, what am I going to do? What the fuck am I going to do? How am I going to get this thing off the wall? I have to do this because I have daughters in here. I'm the grown up. I got to do this, right? So then I was like, I got it. I'm going to go get a jar. I'm thinking about a jar, a jar. You know what I'm saying? This is the only thing I can think of. I'm going to put it on the wall and then I'm going to slide some paper underneath it. This is the, this is what I'm thinking, okay? So as I go downstairs, I'm telling them, give me a jar, give me a jar. Her and Tinky is looking for a nice size jar. The only jar that they could find, you know, like old spaghetti jar. So the, the opening is not that big. So when I go in the kitchen to get this jar from them, I see I have pots. I have a pot top on the counter. Now my all of my tops to my pots are glass, so they're see-through. You know, you can see them. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take this. It was like a nice size pot top. And then I said, I'm not going to get a piece of paper. I'm going to go in my craft room because I have so many freaking crafts in my laundry room. My laundry room is my craft room too, okay? Um, yes. <laughs> so in my craft room slash laundry room, I have these um, disposable cutting boards that you get from the Dollar Tree. I, mean, I was making crafts with them. Brand new. I open up a pack and I tell Nay I'm going upstairs now. Tiki's like, you want me to turn the light on? I'm like, no, don't turn the light on. Don't turn the light on. I can see that I don't need the light on. I don't want to startle his ass. And then he tried to get, he tried to, you know, run off. So Nay got my phone. She don't got the light on in it. I walk up quietly, quietly. Cause he, he, he thinks that I don't see him because he thinks he's blended in with the wall. But lo and behold, dude, you're, I can see you. I can see you. So I just walk up to it, put the pop top right on top of it over his area. And he just tries to, you know, wither around inside. And I take the, that this is when we, then, then they turn the light on for me. So, you know, I got the pot top right here with my right hand and I have the actual disposable um, cutting board, plastic cutting board. And I'm slithering this under the pot top. And I did have a little, a little moment where I had to kind of like figure it out to get it all the way through, but I got it. And once I got it all the way through, I just moved it down to where it was all the way on the sheet and just got it like that. Carried his ass all the way the fuck out and down the block. So this is what I had to do as a single mother, okay? And not saying that I don't want to do these things by myself, but you figure it out. You figure it out and you figure out how to work around shit in your house. You figure out how to fix shit, okay? Because when I tell you I can fix shit, I can give you a new set of headlights, okay, in your car. I, when I tell you I can take them old ones out, rewire them, I can do that. I can change tires, okay, for any car. I can change a motherfucking tire. Yes, girl, I can change a tire. Uh, I, I, I can hang shit on a wall, okay? I can fix holes in a the wall. There's so many things that I can do as a single mother, and that was because it's not that I was put in that, that category, but... Uh, it, but I was put in that, all right? Certain situations just didn't work out for me and I had to figure it out on my own. So as a, as a single mother, I have coped with a lot. Yeah, it would be nice if it was a two-parent home, but if you have like someone that's toxic or an alcoholic, why would you even want to? Because that's just gonna make your life worse. Now, as for your husband and him not, or your ex-husband, excuse me, and him not paying his dues, also not stepping up to the plate and spending time with his children, let me tell you something. For one, my ex-husband, he don't pay no child support. He don't pay shit. And you know something? I used to be in this mindset, like, I'm not about to force you to pay for your children or give me money for your children. If that's what you don't want to do, then that's what you don't want to do. And I still feel that way to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? I still feel that way to a certain degree. I'm not going to force you to spend time with your kids because if you cannot do that without me enforcing you or the courts enforcing you, then that's your problem. I don't, I don't want to force you to do anything for your children. For what? 
you should just openly, readily be willing to do things for your children because they are what? They are your children. So if you don't want to spend time with them, that's fine. I'm not going to force you. You know why? Because at the end of the day or at the end of the century or any time given, these children are going to realize who was there for them. You don't need to really sit around and bash your ex about how he doesn't do anything for your girls. You don't have to because you know why? They're going to see that on their own. And I realized that within my own self, you know what I'm saying? Like with my first kids, I did really realize that you know what I don't need to tell them anything about what their fathers are not doing for them you know there was a time when I used to but then I realized I didn't have to because of the way that they gravitated to me and the way that the things that they would say to me like I was saying the way the things that my daughters would tell me about how I treated them and how I'm there for them and the things that I do for them I realized I didn't have to or my or my kids in general I didn't have to bash their fathers to them. I didn't have to remind them of the things that he doesn't do and the things that I do. I didn't have to do that because they already seen that for themselves. So you don't have to sit around and tell your daughters, oh, well, he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. They see that. They will definitely see that. You don't even have to remind them of the man or the type of man that you want them to be with or that they should look for when it's their time to start dating because they'll see from their father's antics and the things that he didn't do. They'll realize that they don't want anyone that treats them in this particular manner. Now me, per se, it is hard at times being a single mom. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, my children are grown now. They're older. My youngest is about to be 17 next month. So I can't really, you know what I'm saying? I can still say I'm a single mother because I definitely do look out for my children. You know what I'm saying? I make sure that all of my kids are okay. All of my grandkids are okay. But there are things about me as being a single mom that I have to realize, like at now, I need to learn how to say no. And I've been taught this by my daughter Tati and my daughter Nay that I am always like inconveniencing myself for others. You know what I'm saying? And even though these may be my my children or my grandchildren or my nieces and nephews, even though I don't have any nieces and nephews, I need to learn how to say no and stop inconveniencing myself for others. And I think that has a lot to do with me being a single mom. I always was there for my children and I always wanted to be readily available for them. And I still am that way. I'm here, I work from home, and if they ever need me, I'm here for them. It is hard at times being a single mom. It is, it's hard being a mom in general. You know what I'm saying? Whether you have a two parent home or a one parent home, it is hard. I just try to cope the best that I can. I've learned things over the years. I'm able to, you know what I'm saying, talk over things. I'm able to see where I went wrong. I've never been the best mom. Who is the best parent? You know what I'm saying? I, I can never say, I can never sit here and, and take, you know, I can never sit here and say that I've been the best parent because it's a learning, it's a learning thing. It's you, you're you going to learn about parenting for the rest of your life. As long as you're a parent, you're going to learn it. You know what I'm saying? Things change, times evolve. And what you might've said to one kid, 14, 13 years ago, you realize you can't say that to your kids today because things change. Just like with myself, when I was, um, when I had my first kid and my second kid, I was, I was, it wasn't that I was very strict, but I wasn't very strict, but I was, um, let's see, I was a little bit more, less impatient. I was very, not very impatient, but I had less patience. And the things that would, I would say sometimes were not, not good things to say, you know what I'm saying? Especially if I'm going to be using foul language. So I realized, and I've learned over time that that wasn't the right type of technique to teach your children. And I've learned this by having more children. So what I mean is it's a learning curve. You're going to learn new things. You're going to learn how to parent in different styles. And yeah, it gets overwhelming at times. Yeah, you might not be able to go hang out with your friends like you want to. Yeah, you might have to, you know, sacrifice certain things just so that way your household or your children could be okay. And I think that's what everyday life. And with me, I just, you know what I'm saying? I learn from my mistakes. And yeah, I have I have kids that are also able to tell me, well, I didn't like the way you treated me when I was this age. And you know, we talk about it. And I do, I've apologized because I might not have been in my right state of mind. And I might've said something that was like, you know, disrespectful to my kids or hurtful. And I'm able to apologize, but I'm also able to see where I went wrong as being a parent. You know what I'm saying? So nobody's the perfect parent here. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm the perfect parent because nobody's the perfect parent. Do I have strength? I definitely have strength. I've learned from my mistakes and I've learned over time why I have these strengths. And like I said, I'm not giving my ex-husband any type of credit or putting him on any type of pedestal. But I will say that because I've dealt with him and his antics, 
I became a stronger person and I became a person where I can handle everything on my own and I'm very self-sufficient to where I don't need anyone to take care of me or take care of things in my household. And that's only because I've learned because of him and his non-manly antics, okay? As far as not paying child support, well, you know what? Like I said, there are things that you don't have to teach your children because they're going to see this for face value. And it's crazy because my daughter, who's um, Nay, his oldest, our eldest one, she's 22. She has been so, uh, what's the word, upfront with him about his behavior and the way he has treated his family and the way he is not available for his children and the way he has treated me. She has seen this from personal experience. I've never had to tell her anything. He has made it so blatantly blunt right there, throw it in your face to where even Pancake, my dog, sees his antic. So she's very blunt with him. She's not sugarcoating anything. And I love that she's able to do that without me having to ever tell her anything about her father because he's made it known. He's let it be known. So yeah, being a single mother, it's not a piece of cake. It ain't never gonna be a piece of cake. When you have two parents in the household, it ain't never gonna be a piece of cake. Cause look, you got three daughters, they are girls. And that's, you know something about girls? They, they sometimes can be catty, but I tell you what though, they are amazing. I love having daughters. I have three daughters myself, plus two sons. Um, unfortunately, one of my, my children, one of my sons had passed away. And the other one I don't get along with at all because of his disrespect towards women in general. And he's locked up. But anyway, as far as my daughters, I love being a mom to some daughters and sons too. But my daughters, they are so loving. They are so nurturing, especially Tati. Like Tati is like amazing. She's an amazing daughter. And um, she's so nurturing to me and so caring. And I know when it's my time in my old age, when I get to be a senior citizen, senior citizens, old, old, that I know I have somebody who's going to take care of me and look out for me. She's a great daughter and I really so much appreciate her. I appreciate all my daughters. I really, really do because they're all different in their own ways. All my children are different in their own ways. They're all different in their own ways and I respect that. I respect the choices that they make in life. You know, some may not be the best, but I, we do have conversations and they snap back to reality. But I respect them as young women and I respect them for being my children. And you know, something like she said, like, like Faye said, she feels so much love when she's around them. And that's the same way that I can say the same about my, my children. My daughters, I, I feel the same about them. Um, all my kids, I feel, I feel the love. You know what I'm saying? I miss my son Wuzzle to pieces. But when he was here, I definitely felt the love and the good times and the fun times he was just an amazing soul um so it's hard being a single mom because you have three kids and each one of them have their own personalities okay i don't ever try to make the other one be like another one that's one thing that i don't do like oh well your your sister is a, is a doctor you need to be a doctor like her that's one thing i don't do let you choose who you're going to be your your own person so i don't try to make any of my other children be like my other children that's one thing i don't do they're their own person and you know, it is what it is. It's just a learning curve. But yeah, you have to learn as a single mom, you have to learn how to budget. You have to learn how to fix things on your own. And when I tell you something, when you could be like really self-sufficient and not depend on anyone, then you really feel it. And so just, you know what, just keep doing what you're doing. And if you feel the need and you feel like you have to take him back to court to get your child support pay, then girl, do so. Don't ever allow anyone to stop you doing what you feel is best for you and your family. Now, he had an agreement with you and he failed that agreement, then yeah, take his ass back to court and get, you, get, get your money. As far as him not spending time with your daughters, you know what, let's not force nothing on nobody don't force it on him because then it's not genuine you know what I'm saying and if he can't do it genuinely then don't put your daughters in that situation to where he's doing something only because he's forced because they're gonna feel and they're gonna feel those vibes you know what I'm saying they're gonna feel that negativity energy they're gonna feel that energy coming from him so I would say this Go ahead and take his ass back to court and get those funds that you deserve. But as far as him not spending time with them, you know what? Leave that up to him. Don't force anybody to do anything for you. You know what I'm saying? But as far as the money, for sure, definitely take him to court. And I hope that this was the answer that you were looking for or just somewhat, somewhat there. But I'm here for you and as well as the ladies in the comments. Let her know, let Faye know what you have encountered or what it's like being a single mother or a mother in general. What are some of the things that you may have encountered? So on that note, let's move on to the next. Okay, talk. so the next email, how to get over rejection. Hello, April. How was your day? May I say I'm so glad you brought back Real Talk. I look forward to it every Wednesday. I love listening to your perspective on topics. So that is the reason I send you this email. For this email, can you please call me Luana? I am a 30-year-old woman who is at the moment single, no children, just enjoying my life and career path and trying to do better within myself. I do want to be in a relationship, but I am finding it impossible to find someone to get to know. 
Recently, a couple months back, I decided to go on this internet series to find love. I said, why not? I'll give it a chance. Unfortunately, on the show, I wasn't able to find love and actually was on the show twice. The way this show is ran is the men get to choose from looks if they are interested, as well as the women do too. We are basically lined up, and from there, the process begins. One single person comes out. We, those who are lined up, get to choose, as well as the single guest gets to choose. I really don't want to give too much info on the series, but it's kind of popular. It does consist of balloons. So from that show, I was critiqued and criticized by all the men, as well as rejected. Yeah, I may not be for everyone as I don't want to be, but it's kind of hard after a while being rejected. And I'm not sure if I should take it as the problem is me or am I just putting way too much thought into this? I honestly don't like being rejected, especially not constantly. It starts to consume my thoughts as if I'm really not attractive. I want to ask you, have you ever been rejected? And if so, how do you deal with it? What was your thoughts about the person or persons who may have rejected you? And how did you come back from that rejection? Thank you so much, April. You are a true gem and sister, and I appreciate you and the time you put into your videos. Have a blessed day, Luana. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, Luana, let me just say this. I'm very familiar with the show that she's talking about. Um, there, are th there are many different versions of this particular internet series on YouTube. Um, it's called Pop the Balloon or Find Love, okay? So there are many different versions of this particular series. Now, when I say many different versions, I mean like different channels are hosting this or different channels are doing this. <laughs> now, the one channel that I only have watched is the one by a young lady named Arlette. And it's actually based out here in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona this is where she lives at. This is where it's at. So this is the only one that I've watched. I have tried to watch other versions of this, but because of the other versions quality, I just felt like she's the one who started this originally. I'm just going to watch her because she's the originator. In my opinion, she's the originator. Her sound quality is good. Her video quality is good. Her audio quality is good. Her visual quality is good. I like the fact that people are not so, let's say, um, overly ratchet on the series or the show. And I just feel like, you know what? Her quality is just better. Her content is better than these other versions. Now, the other versions do come off as very um, ratchet, very um, not really a lot, not a lot of thought process is put into it. And I'm like very, I'm a big person on visuals. So I know what show she's talking about, series she's talking about. I've seen it floating around on YouTube so long, for so long. And because of this email, I did take the opportunity to check it out because I knew when she said the balloon thing, I said, let me, let me check this out. Now, so like I said, I didn't know really which one she was on, but from the quality, I was only able to watch Arlette's and that was the only one that I was able to watch. So the series is like, like I said, it's a pop the balloon type of thing. They are lined up. Like, I don't really remember how many women or men are lined up. I would say, I want to say maybe 10 people at a time so they lined up okay and they all have these red balloons and the toothpick and so the single person comes out so it may be 10 women lined out and then a single man to come out or maybe 10 men lined up and a single woman comes out now the show the series is about an hour hour and a half depending on how many singles they have to come out you know what i'm saying and how long it takes to talk to each person and why they was rejected or why they popped their balloon basically okay so the people that are lined up they they bring out the single person and they pop it if, if he come out he ugly to you you just pop it you know what i'm saying um if you like if you dislike the things that he's saying you can pop it if he don't like you then he can pop your balloon so as i I watched the series because of this email. I said, well, let me watch this series. I mean, like I said, I've seen it on YouTube. It's popped up on my feed. I really wasn't interested in it. So I said, let me, let me, let me check it out. Let me, let me see this. Let me see what this is all about. Like I've seen little clips of it, um, especially with the one with the guy who's the plumber. I'm pretty sure you guys have all seen that clip of him. Um, he's not really attractive. He's not for me, but you know what? To each his own. So I sat and I watched the series. Like when I tell you I sat and watched the series, I binge watched the series on Friday from Friday to Sunday morning is when I watched it. There isn't a lot of episodes. Like when I say there's probably like about 12 episodes. There's 12 episodes, I do believe. And the last one was probably like two or three weeks ago. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be more episodes. So there's about 12 episodes. And then there also are episodes where you can catch up with them or get to know that particular person that was on the show, on the episode. So I watched it and there are people that are reoccurring on it. Like I've seen a few people that came on twice, even three times. Now, this is my thoughts and my thoughts only from the particular show and me as a person. I'm not about to put myself on anybody's television or anybody's network or streaming device and be rejected by anyone or be picked apart from what i watched from the series these people they're not, now mind you I, I only see black people on this series now mind you 
you put yourself out there and this is what happens. Like, I don't really, I'm not into like those dating apps. I'm definitely not into going live and trying to find someone because I don't really feel like popping a balloon is going to find you anybody's genuine love. To each his own. Maybe it's something to do. Maybe you can get some clout off of it or whatever. But from what I watched from the series, from the show, people do are very, very picky and they come on this show and it seems like they just want to pick you apart. Like I've seen beautiful women on this show and when the men come out, the single men, young lady, the host will ask, why did you pop her balloon? I didn't like the way she wore those shoes with the dress. Like, are you serious? We're not, we're on here telling people the reason why you pop their balloon is because you didn't like their shoes. Now, mind you, these women are drop dead gorgeous. And he, the, the single guy will even state, you're beautiful. But I just didn't like the fact that her shoes, I didn't like her shoes or she had a spot that wasn't moisturized. This is true. There's one guy that was on there and he picked this girl apart. When I say she was pretty, she was pretty. She was dressed nice. He said that her right knee didn't look moisturized and he felt like because of that she would not follow suit with his shea butter regimen and his moisturization regimen so therefore he wasn't going to choose her and that's why he popped his own balloon like the reasons for popping the balloons are so ridiculous but also i do notice that some of these men on there these women are drop dead gorgeous and they picking them apart. I start feeling like, you know what? You only picking these women apart because you know you can't live up to her standards. You're not in her league. You know she's too pretty for you. So that's the reason why they try to pick them apart. I've seen disrespect on there. I've seen one woman, she just got picked apart to, to the utmost. And it was like, you know what? I, I would never put myself out there like that. Like when you put yourself in these type of elements, this is what's going to happen. So being rejected, I don't have a problem being rejected because I've been rejected before and I've rejected, okay? But I just feel like when you put yourself in certain situations like this, then you have to be aware of what it comes with. It comes with ridicule and it comes with humiliation. It comes with rejection. And people like to critique you and criticize you. And if you don't like to be critiqued and criticized, humiliated and ridiculed, then girl, this type of behavior, this type of scenario, this type of scenery is definitely not for you. Now, like I said, the show is all over YouTube. But like I said, there are some people that are original, the originator of it. And her name is Arlette. And I like hers. I like her setup. I like her her vocals I like her visual she has a very decent show now some of the people on it yeah some of them the first episode it did look like she picked some people off the street like they were just like let's try this out we're gonna it, it looked like she picked some people off the street and I only say that because she does say dress your best dress to dress your best as if you're ready to go on a date some of these people look like they just rolled from underneath the bed not off the bed but from underneath the bed so I feel like the first episode and the second episode the girls was not well put together and that's okay to each his own you wear what the fuck you want to wear but me personally I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I have like people rejecting me on a constant basis like you know it's just not this just is not for me I don't do the apps and I don't do things like this. Now being rejected, yeah, that's like being told no. I will be honest and tell you, I don't like people telling me no. That's why I really don't ask a lot of people for help or for certain things because I don't like to be told no. And no is a rejection. But as far as in the dating scene, there's somebody for everybody. I wouldn't really take too much and put too much thought and emphasis on my looks because I was on this particular show. Now let's keep in mind, you went on this particular show in hopes of finding love, which is definitely not going to happen by popping a balloon. But you went on this show to in hopes of finding someone to, to love on you and to be in a relationship with you and to get to know. And that's fine, but it wasn't really organically. You lined up with a bunch of other women, which looks ridiculous to me because I'm not about to be lined up with no fucking body. Okay. We're not going to compare. I'm not going to be lined up to be compared. And that's what I feel like it is. So I really honestly would not. What is her name? I really honestly wouldn't take what they, that is her name, right? Like, let me make sure because I don't want to be using the wrong name. Yes. I wouldn't really take their rejection to me. So serious, like seriously, I've seen this show and the men that go on there, they're really not much to um, to write home about. OK, you ain't don't text about don't write about it. They really not much to a mention. OK, let's just put it like that. So I wouldn't take their rejection as a sign of ugliness. Girl, the ones that I did see on here, I was saying, girl, pop your balloon, pop your balloon, pop your balloon. The ones that came out were really not much of they were not eye candy. I'm not saying everybody has to be eye candy, but like um, some serious shit. I would have popped. I would have been, I would have been steady popping. Okay. Steady pop, 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 pop. Not saying I'm a picky person, but just from their demeanor alone, I would have definitely been popping. Now, mind you, attraction is the first thing that you see when you look at a person, you know, you got to look good for me to be attracted to you, but you also got to get to know them. So I really don't find these shows to be like the type of show where you really want to find true love. Okay. I really find these shows to be something like they want to put themselves out there. They want to get to be known. 
don't allow other people's um, thoughts on you make you feel like a less of a person. Just because you've got rejected by people that's on a series, don't allow that to make you feel like you're ugly. Don't allow that to beat yourself down. Girl, don't allow that. You can meet someone organically without having to go on these type of shows, without having to meet them on apps. You can definitely do that. But first of all, you have to have the self-esteem. Don't allow other people to make you feel less than what you are. Now, how do I take rejection? Like I said, I really don't like to be told no. That's just one thing I do not like at all. But I have rejected plenty of men in my lifetime. And, and it is what it is. Some of them, I do notice that men don't like to take rejection really easy. Uh, let's stay for this. I met this gentleman at the post office a few weeks back. Now, he wasn't he wasn't like my type of attraction. I, I definitely wouldn't have... Um, if, if he came out, I would pop the balloon, okay? Um, he wasn't for me, but he had a nice demeanor. And we spoke at the post office. Um, he needed some directions on the nearest UPS store. And I gave him that. As we stood outside and was chit-chatting, he wanted to, you know, exchange phone numbers. I did that as well. And I also did let him know there was no need to flirt with me because he was flirting. There's no need to flirt with me because I'm not interested in being in a relationship with anyone. Now, I told you that, right? So he texts me, I text back. He texts me, I text back. And I also did let him know again verbally, excuse me, te textly in the message that I'm not interested in being in a relationship with anyone, not just him, but anyone in general, but him too, because he wasn't my type. So he accepted that. He invited me out to play pool at the place that me and my friend used to go to. I declined only because it was on the weekend. I just really didn't want to go. I just wanted to hang out at home. And I also felt like if I already told you not to flirt with me, I still felt like you was trying. OK, I declined. I said I had some things to do. Now, mind you, a few days ago, he texts me. It's about nine o'clock at night. Uh, almost nine. I don't really like the late text because that's not what I'm, I'm going to do with you. The text message said hi. And I looked at it and I, I, I forgot about it. I looked at it because I was in the midst of doing something and I totally forgot about the message. Now, the next day I get a message early in the morning. It was like eight something talking about it's like that, yo. Now, mind you, he's 60, way, way out of my league. OK, when I say out of my league, like I'm 50, I don't really want to date nobody that's 60. Like, I mean, he didn't look like he was, but it's still I don't want to date a senior citizen. So the next day he was like, it's like that, yo, Y-O means yo, right? So I looked at the message and I was like, whoa. Now I look at the other message. Oh, he's talking about forgot to respond back to his hello. There was no really need for you to text me and say, oh, it's like that, yo. So what I wrote back was, this is what I wrote back. He said, he didn't say it's like, he said, damn, like that, yo. Okay. He said, hi, excuse me. On Thursday, he texted me. It was 4.30, not 8. 4.30 in the afternoon. I was busy in the midst of something. So I did totally forget to text back. Hello. No big deal. People forget things. So the next morning, he texts, damn, like that, yo. I, I was like, what? And then I read, oh, I forgot to respond back. Okay. So my response was from damn like that, yo. What? For someone 60 years old, you sure are immature and don't even know what another person may be going on. What, what another person may be having going on in their life. But yeah, it's like that, yo. And I left it at that and he never replied back. So that was my rejection to him because he just didn't seem like he could take the word no, he couldn't take the rejection. So he cussed me out basically in the next day, which is fine because we weren't really going to hang out. I really didn't want to hang out with you because I already knew your intentions. But I don't I don't really care if someone turns me down for a date or doesn't like the way I look. I don't I don't really care because I know for myself that just because you don't find me attractive, there's somebody else that is going to find me attractive. So I don't allow anybody's rejection bring me down. I don't allow anyone's rejection make me feel lesser than what I am. I don't allow that. And I ex actually don't allow myself to be put in certain scenarios where I can be humiliated and ridiculed. And I feel like things like these type of shows, um, are a lot. it brings in a lot of weird people. You know what I'm saying? You go on these type of shows and you set yourself up for being ridiculed. You set yourself up for being humiliated. You set yourself up for the rejection. I feel like if you are a classy person and you know yourself, you don't have to put yourself through that. There's another show that I do like to watch also that's on YouTube, which is Kendra G Live. She does love shows. She also has an app out now. Now I like to watch it 
And when I watch it, I do read the comments. And some people can be so cruel and so fucking mean. They pick apart other people on the show. And that's the one thing that I'm not about to set myself up for. I'm not about to set myself up for being ridiculed and picked apart. And I notice that people in the comments, they just say such the meanest things. And it's like, damn from your attitude and from everybody's attitude in these comments you guys none of y'all deserve fucking love no wonder why you guys are single and you're watching this because you're all fucking miserable so i would not allow anybody else's rejection or thought process of all my looks to make me feel any type of way luana you are who you are and you can find someone you definitely will organically just give yourself time and don't put yourself in certain situations nobody likes rejection nobody likes the word no but i think like within time as a person you are able to be able to handle certain things if you know yourself as a person and you know that you don't like rejection and you don't like to be critiqued and you don't like to be ridiculed excuse me because my lips are dry then I would find I, if you know yourself as a person and you know you don't like to be critiqued you don't like to be ridiculed you don't like to be humiliated you don't like to be criticized then you need to learn to not put yourself in certain situations and going on shows love shows finding a date finding love those type of things those type of scenarios those type of shows you really don't find love like that you know what I'm saying by popping a balloon or by looking at someone somebody could be so beautiful and so attractive but they could be just so nasty their hygiene could be disgusting their attitude could be disgusting they could just be so mean and nasty and just because that person is just beautiful and you decide you want to go out on a date for them it with them it still may not work out and then in the end beauty is like oh she's beautiful but she's dirty she's nasty you know what I'm saying so don't really put your thoughts into what other people think of you like yeah we do want other people to think of us as great people as beautiful people but you don't allow it to consume your thoughts don't allow it to consume who you are as a person like seriously like I don't really give a fuck if people th think that I'm ugly I don't really give a fuck if some guys think that I'm fat I just really really don't um don't feel that way like if you think that I'm fat and I'm ugly then that's cool because there's somebody for everybody out there and yeah I don't really like to be rejected I don't really like to say be me told no but I also don't put myself in certain situations that will allow me to be rejected so how do I handle rejection I just don't put myself in those situations and that's how it is so your number one mistake was going on to this show and trying to find love and it's okay because we learn from our mistakes and we move forward so with that being said i think that you should move forward and finding love organically learn to um be yourself and be the person that you are and don't allow anybody to critique you and criticize you to the point where it's bothering you you know what i'm saying we're going to criticize and we're going to critique people on a daily basis you know i could be in public and i'll be like i don't like her wig or i don't like her shoes that that's me critiquing or criticizing someone but i'm pretty sure that person ain't gonna allow it to bother them like i've been told before i don't like your pants okay and bitch what as long as i like them i don't give a fuck what you like that's what it is so you also need to realize that you love is is genuine and you will definitely find that in the path w when it's your time OK, just don't throw yourself out there like that, because when you put yourself out there on these type of scenarios and these type of shows, then you are inviting in bad behavior. You're inviting in you're just inviting in people that are going to do you dirty, who are going to talk shit to you. And when I tell you I've watched this show, like if you guys have never watched it, check it out. It's called Pop Your Balloon, Pop the Balloon or Find Love. And the one person that I watch, her name is Arlette. She's a black young lady. And like I said, you 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 can it's 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 interesting and it's entertaining, okay? It's for entertainment purposes only. And so that's why I don't even take it serious. But after watching the series, it's like, God damn, these men out here, y'all really competing with women. And I'm not saying all men, but a lot of them seem to like to compete with men, women. Um, and it's sad, but it is what it is. I've seen some sassy men on there and I've seen some men on there that's like, are you really on here talking about I look ugly? Have you looked in the mirror? And I don't really like to judge people on their looks, but if you ugly, you fucking ugly. But that's just how I feel about you. That doesn't mean other people will feel that way about you. Understand what I'm saying? So there could be a man next to me and you could say that he's drop dead gorgeous. Bitch, I could say he's fucking ugly. So each person has their own thought process. Okay, so don't allow one person, two people, three, four, five people make you feel like you lesser than. Don't allow them to make to get in your head to where you feel like, oh well, I'm not pretty. Cause look, what he may not like, somebody might be drooling the fuck over. Okay, just like what I said, somebody might not like my fat ass, but I bet you, I guess what, the next motherfucker will. Now I'm not fat, but I'm nicely plump, and that's okay too. But I'm what I'm just saying is this. There's somebody for everybody. Don't allow other people's thought process of you and your looks consume your thoughts and make you feel less than what you are. You know what I'm saying, girl? You beautiful to yourself and somebody else is going to find you attractive. And I'm going to just say this. I have seen the ugliest motherfuckers be with the prettiest women. Okay? 
And when I say they ugly, they was ugly. And I wasn't the only person that said they ugly. And there was quite a few people that said they was ugly. And they how how they get these girls? Well, they thought they was they, the girl thought they was fine. So see what I'm saying? It is what it is. But Luana, just carry on and move forward past this and just know from that experience that you don't have to deal with that type of environment to find love. You understand what I'm saying? Don't put yourself out there. And that way, if you don't put yourself out there in that type of scenario, then you won't have to feel this way. Some, some real shit. Check the series out, the show out, because it's it's very interesting. It's very entertaining. I don't take none of it serious because I don't I don't really feel like any of these people, once they have went on a date with somebody, that they found love. I really don't think that. But you know what? It is what it is. But you know, it is what it is. But on that note, guys, I love y'all all. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs the video up. You know what I'm saying? Check out my merch on my website. I love y'all, and I will see y'all in the next one.